Lions are five and one for the second straight season and only the third time since 1991 and now set atop with a mighty NFC North who have been the best division by record this season at 19 and six. Brant, what can you say, man? Who let them Lions get hot? So I got one question for you other than that. Who or what has caught your eye in a good way so far this season for the mighty Detroit Lions? I tell you what, Dave, there must be a fire that is burning with the intensity of a thousand suns in Detroit. Because Tigers get hot, Lions get hot, massive win yesterday over Minnesota. Um, one that at first we didn't really think we were gonna do well with the way that the offense started, but um something that's caught my eye. I mean, how can you not love the play from Jared Goff? I mean, he has been phenomenal these past these past few weeks. Had the zero incompletion game with a receiving touchdown against Seattle. Dallas, he had an outstanding game. Yesterday had another outstanding game. It's just a well-balanced offense because you would think with a quarterback like that who's doing as well as that, um, that the run game wouldn't be doing well. But look at Sonic and Knuckles, uh, Montgomery and Gibbs. You know, it's it's as good as the passing game. So that's one thing that's really caught my eye is just the offense has been phenomenal and it's been a lot of fun to watch. You know, Brent, I have to agree with you. Um, when Jared Goff first came to Detroit with the Matthew Stafford trade, I was not a fan. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Jared Goff. I wasn't impressed with Lady Day out in California. But he bought into what the Lions have been, who they are, Dan Campbell's process, and has really just been great. And nowadays, you can catch me just with everybody else chanting, Jared Goff, Jared Goff. And, I, you know, I, I I was going right up the same avenue with you with what impressed me. And I want to share a few stats. Uh, this season, Goff is 128 completions on 174 attempts with 1,610 yards and 10 touchdowns. The first three weeks, Goff was 70 for 106 with 723 yards, three touchdowns and four interceptions. Not bad, not great, but not bad. Uh, the last three weeks, dating back to the Seattle game, the Cowboys game, and then just on Sunday there against the Vikings, um, he has been 58 of 68, 887 yards, seven touchdowns, and zero interceptions. He had two-plus touchdowns in the last four games alone. So, Brant, I'm telling you, Jared Goff, he's been on one for sure. And he's a lot of the reason that's gotten the Lions offense going. Um, and now, Brian, I, I want to take a look at the remaining schedule. Um, what games are you most excited for when you look at the upcoming schedule uh, for Detroit? What I'm really excited for is to play the NFC North. And that sounds like a scary situation because so far the NFC North has been the best division in football and that is undoubtedly so just here in a couple of weeks uh november 3rd going to ford field west out at lambeau field playing the packers that'll be a big one just to see how the packers stack up to the lions how the lions stack up to the packers um i'm excited for all the rest of the divisional games going all the way down to minnesota game 18 hopefully the division doesn't come down to that hopefully it the lions have a decided before then uh i mean i better not eat my words by us being out of it by that point but that would be a very electric game if that's what decided the division um week 18 two specifically that i'm really excited for back-to-back -back thursday games thanksgiving day against chicago at home and then the following week thursday night football against green bay the two division games those are going to be crucial in the long run of winning, winning the division, and I mean both Thursday games, both all eyes of America are going to be on those games, and it's they're going to be big games. So I'm really looking forward to those games. I have to agree, Brent. You hit it pretty well on there. Um, two games that I specifically look forward to the most. Um, honorable mention to Jacksonville Week 11 on November 17th. I got a buddy from college who's a big Jacksonville fan. So shout out Mr. Dylan Kearns. Um, but the game that I really look at and schedule, like on the schedule that really excites me 
And it's kind of disappointing because they're not looking to be as good as they were expected to be this year. Is that game going into San Francisco, second to last game of the year? That's going to be a revenge game. We all know what happened in the NFC Championship uh, last year, or just earlier this year, in fact, earlier in 2024. Um, Detroit, they showed what they did when they were PO'd at Dallas. <laughs> and I know Dallas ain't looking to be great this year either, but... I can't wait to see what them boys can do uh, when they go down uh, out south to Cali and, you know, face up with San Francisco, a team that, you know, is right there on their radar. And finally, Brant, I want to ask you on the Lions, what's your regular season record prediction? Knowing what we know, which teams are good, which teams are bad, what's your final record prediction? Next week against Tennessee, I could see that being a win. Um just the non-divisional games. Uh, Houston will be a toss-up. I think we could have a good chance of winning that. Um, I think we beat Jacksonville and Indianapolis. I think we can hang around with Buffalo, maybe get a win there. Um, and I think we'll compete with San Francisco. So give me one loss, not in the division, either to probably Houston, Buffalo, or San Francisco. Give me one loss there. So that would put them up to two losses. And... Of the remaining five divisional games, give me two losses there. So I could see Detroit ending the season at 13 and four. That will be probably enough to win the division and will definitely get you into the playoffs. I'm agreeing with you there, actually, completely. Uh, I, I got them down for a 13 and four record to uh, end the regular season, too. Um, it could come from a hodgepodge of different teams, but honestly, uh, the ones that I wrote down and wrote down as games that, um, that will, the Lions will probably end up losing is, uh, Green Bay once to the Bears once, and then to Buffalo. It's, that's probably going to be, that'll be a good game, but boy, oh boy, Buffalo has, has looked absolutely phenomenal this year. One final topic there on the Lions, Brant, um, we're all extremely disappointed to see Aiden Hutchinson go down. Key piece to that defense, key piece to the defensive line, a leader, a captain. Now the Lions have to figure out, do they need to replace him on the defensive line? And Brant, one of the big names out there is Max Crosby. First and foremost, do you think the Lions should, uh, should go out and make a trade for Max Crosby? And what would that cost? Who else would you have in mind? Well, I think they definitely should, at some point, go get Max Crosby. I think the interest is very clear that we want Max Crosby. The fans want Max Crosby. I think the team would enjoy having uh, an extra edge rusher, the quality of Max Crosby. And then on the other side, Max Crosby has been very unhappy at the Raiders. The Raiders have shown that they are not – dedicated to sticking around with him so there was a disagreement in practice last week where uh, I guess he created a disturbance during practice and then ended up throwing on a lion's hat so there's interest to come to Detroit, to Detroit if you're Max Crosby I think they should but I think that we as fans need to be patient because I think Brad Holmes has a plan to go get him but you can't just go and say we want him hey let's make a deal because right now the Raiders know that we need an edge rusher and they're gonna make us have to spend the book on it would he be worth the money would he be worth the the, the trade picks and stuff yes but I think you could get him for cheaper if we wait a few more weeks get closer to the trade deadline um what I think it's gonna cost it's definitely gonna cost a first rounder um second rounder maybe another first rounder um instead of a second rounder but it's definitely going to cost some high quality draft picks but at that point they're building for the future will we are building for now it's a it's a deal you know brant i agree with you on some lines and i don't agree with you on some lines as of right now um granted we've only seen one complete game without aiden hutchinson I don't exactly know if they need to exactly go get Max Crosby right now. I mean, I'll agree at some point, I think they're going to really need some depth there on that, on the edge of the defensive line. Um, 
But right now, they really got to see how bad they need them. The defense did okay yesterday. Um, Aaron Jones did not have a phenomenal day. He had an okay day. And how much the, the defensive line obviously played a lot into it. Uh, how much a guy like Max Crosby could come in and make a difference would obviously be quite a bit. But if you need a new car... Why go out and get one with four-wheel drive? Why pay extra for four-wheel drive if you live in Georgia? Is kind of what I'm getting at here in terms of, yes, it would be nice to have Max Crosby. There's mutual interest. But if you got to trade away two first-round draft picks, why do it if you don't have to? If you don't need a guy like Max Crosby, if you can go get someone for cheaper that maybe won't be as good but will still provide phenomenal depth there at the position, you know, Brad Holmes has built this team based off of draft picks. And he's not just building for a Super Bowl now. He's building. He wants to be like the Chiefs. He wants to be a year after year Super Bowl contender, not just a one or two and done like what we saw of the Rams. I don't think Brad Holmes wants to go all in. I think he just wants to keep building and building. And he knows that under his process um, and the way that Dan Campbell has, you know, has this team feeling and has this team playing they're going to get there someday and it's going to be worth the wait if they just don't rush it, if they don't go all in. And then maybe then instead of one or two Super Bowls, we could be seeing three, four, five Super Bowls.